I give thanks that I am ever renewing the ever unfolding expression of infinite life, health, and energy. Let this peace within the walls and my prosperity within my palaces. I give thanks for ever increasing health, youth, and beauty. I am the radiant child of God. My mind, body, and affairs now express his radiant perfection. I give thanks that I am now rich, well, and happy, and that my financial affairs are in divine order. Every day and every way, I am growing richer and richer. Money, 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 manifest thyself here and now in rich abundance. I am an irresistible magnet with the power to attract unto myself everything that I divinely desire according to the thoughts feelings, and mental pictures I constantly entertain and radiate. I am the center of my universe. I have the power to create whatever I wish. I attract whatever I radiate. I attract whatever I mentally choose and accept. I begin choosing and mentally accepting the highest and best in life. I now choose and accept health, success, and happiness. I now choose lavish abundance for myself and for all humankind. This is a rich, friendly universe, and I dare to accept its riches, its hospitality, and to enjoy them now. And so it is. Thank you for calling the Lessons in Wisdom call. My name is Isakar Bay. I am the spiritual, rec- spiritual director of the Temple of Enlightenment International Spiritual Center. And I want to thank all of you for being on the call tonight. Uh, those of you who uh, did not find a robbery to uh, get on this call and be a part of this, we, we're actually delighted tonight that you are uh, with us and that you are a part of this call. Uh, listen, I just wanted to put this out there. You're going to see the flyers coming. Um, on August the 8th, 2021, uh, we may go between 8 and 9 p.m. Um, I don't know when I'm going to start. I would say maybe 9 p.m. I'll start at 9 p.m. Sunday night, August the 8th. We're going to be doing a Sin Prosperity Now prophetic encounter call. And so I will be doing prophetic words, uh, doing readings uh, on the air. Um, this will be on the call. It will be recorded, but it will be only for those who are a part of the call this will not go on our YouTube channel. So you would definitely want to be a part of this. Not only am we going to be doing that, but I'm going to be giving everybody who sows the seed of 119.25, which comes out of Psalms 119.25, Sin Prosperity Now. We're going to be sending you the Sin Prosperity Now candles that I'm going to be sending out along with the, well, after I prophesy, we will get your information and send you out a candle. I'm also going to put together a um, PDF, a sheet of money affirmation, of prosperity affirmations that I will also send along with that. So I, I'm looking forward to having a great time. August 8th is the new moon. It will fall on August 8th. Um, and so you definitely want to be a part of this call because this is going to be a time to make a great shift. There's also some things that I want to prophetically um, give you an update on that has to do with what's going on in the world, where we need to be, what's our next move that we need to make, and where we need to be health, uh, financially healthy as far as our health, what we need to take, different things that we can take. Um, and so we're going to be uh, discussing those things on the call as well. So I definitely want you to invite as many people as you can to be on that call because it will be definitely be a powerful call, and we're looking forward to that. So that's going to be August the 8th, so I would say 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, that Sunday night, we will be doing the Sin Prosperity Now uh, prophetic encounter, and we will be doing a lot of different things with that. I'll keep you guys posted during the week, and you will uh, see the uh, flyers and advertisements regarding that. Uh, tonight, I wanted to uh, talk about the secret formula to eliminating worry. One definition gives the word worry to give way to anxiety or unease, allowing one's mind to dwell on difficulty or troubles. 
another one says a state of a state of anxiety and uncertainty over actual or potential problems. So so here we go with the anxiety over the potential actual or potential problems. And so we want to talk about tonight because worry is a very dangerous thing. And we want to discuss tonight a formula that we can use on how to remove the worry. I want to go for the text tonight. Uh, It's going to come out of Matthew, the sixth chapter, 25 through 34. And I'm going to read this whole thing. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Bible. But it's going to be called... uh, It's going to be out of, again, Matthew, the 6th chapter, the 25th verse through the 31st, 34th. 25th verse says, Therefore, I tell you, stop being worried or anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, and they neither sow seed nor reap the harvest nor gather the crops into the barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth more than they? And who of you by worrying could add one hour to the length of your life? And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and the wildflowers of the field grow? They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothes. Yet I say to you, not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today, and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? 31. Therefore, do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, what are we going to eat, or what are we going to drink, or what are we going to wear? For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has has enough trouble of its own. And that's Matthew 6, the 25th chapter through the 34th verse, and that is our text for tonight. I wanted to talk about this because worrying is something that ah, it's it's a very it's a very dangerous thing. It could very it could be very detrimental to one's health, as we will discuss tonight. And I, I just think that when we look at worrying, one has to begin to understand the context of how detrimental it really is. And I oftentimes will tell people that worrying magnifies the issue. Worrying magnifies the problem. Worrying is a negative state of mind which causes anxiety, distress, and uneasiness. It works slow, but persistently. It's slow, but the more you do it, it becomes persistent. It destroys your initiative, your self-confidence, and your reasoning faculties to be able to find reasoning in your faculties of of how to deal with an issue or how to deal with the circumstances that you are faced with. Worrying is a form of continuous fear caused by indecision or uncertainty with 
respect to the outcome of a particular situation, event, or circumstance, right? When your mind is filled with fear and worry, a negative vibration is transmitted. So you got to understand that worrying, now listen, those of you that were on the call with us on Sundays, you know about, we talked about the millionaire of the Bible series, when they talked about what you harbor secretly will be attracted to you, will be magnetized to you. And so if fear and worry create a negative vibration that's transmitted, that vibration trans that vibration that we create, which is of negative uh, of negativity and worry, passes through your attitude to your mind and from your mind to all the experiences that you deal with. You, you, you have to be able to understand the, the significance of worrying because that's what it does. It, it allows you to create this negative, it allows you to create this negative vibration and that negative vibration now uh, begins to transmit into your presence. I don't know about you, but I don't like to be around people that's negative. I don't like to be around people that complain and worry all the time because I'm not a person that complains and worries. And sometimes that negative energy, I don't like to be around it because I'm, I'm a person that, that is pretty much, uh, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm a person that's uh, easy to connect on spiritual and discernment, and so I don't like to be around people that complain or that worry or that are always negative. That 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 vibrational transmission that they have, I don't want it to come to me. I don't want that negativity to come on me. Um, and and I don't want to, I don't want to be in a position to where I'm allowing the negativity to come and to overshadow me and to overtake me. I don't want that. I never want it to overshadow or overtake me. Now, worrying, as I said, magnifies. It makes things bigger than what they are. When you have a problem, what you're doing is you are worrying is magnifying it a hundred times uh, more than what it needs to be. Right? And so when you when you deal with a problem, you have to be careful of of how you are how you are dealing with that because it's like how are you gonna allow yourself to to blow this issue up to the point where you are allowing this problem, this issue to be bigger. Worrying says, worrying says, I am concerned, right? Whenever you, worry starts off as a concern. So it starts off with me being concerned about an issue, a situation, a circumstance. I become concerned about it. This is something that was brought to my attention. This is something that just came about that, that I'm just dealing with. And because this came to me, the one thing that I that that I'm dealing with is first it comes as a concern. It's something that's come to my attention, so I am focused on it. I and it is in my direct attention. It's something that needs my attention. It's something that I need to handle, but it's a concern right now, right? From the concern state, we have the ability to deal with it while it's just a concern. But sometimes we linger on the concern and still linger on the concern until it becomes until it becomes us worrying about it. Worrying and is constantly focusing, fear. What if this happens? What if it does happen? What if I don't get to uh make this happen? Suppose I don't get to make the payment. Suppose I this person doesn't show up. Suppose I was supposed to have this meeting to close the deal. And, and all these things that we're worrying about and we are making these issues, these situations, these circumstances so much bigger. Listen, you are bigger than any issue or problem that you ever had. And so what you have to do is understand that you are a spiritual being having a human experience. 
you are always, I don't care how bad the situation is, I don't care how bad the circumstances, you are bigger than every problem, you are bigger than every circumstance. But when you worry about it, you magnetize it and make it so much bigger than what it is. And that's what a magnifying glass does. It makes things bigger. Right? And so I, I just think that when when we when we when we deal with these issues of problems, we have to keep in the context that the higher your consciousness penetrates, the greater your unity with the divine. Consciousness is everything. We know that consciousness is our only reality. When you are worrying about something, you're now entered into a state of a consciousness of worry, which means that whatever you focus on, you magnetize to you. Worrying is detrimental because worrying doesn't solve the issue. Worrying doesn't solve the problem. Worrying makes the issue, the problem, worse. Because what you're doing is what you harbor secretly, what you focus on is what you will attract, is what you will bring in to fruition. And so if we're going to be masters, we have to learn how to deal with things right away, how to deal with things right on. Um, it's nothing wrong, and, we, and I'm going to go through some steps here, but concentration and focus are built by the power of the will. Your will must be stronger than the will of allowing the problems, the issues, the circumstances to be bigger than you. You have to learn how to use your will and how to use your concentration and your focus to focus on the solution, the answer, the remedy for whatever issue or circumstances that you're dealing with. You exist because your will to, to be exists. You don't exist because you have a body. You don't exist because you have a skeleton. You don't exist because you have blood flowing through your body. You exist because your will to be exists. As it is in consciousness, so shall it be on earth. So I, I, I think that, um, you know, we have to we have to be at a place where we understand the significance of really moving to that level of understanding, dealing with, with worry. Now, one of the first things that I want to look at is one of the most important steps of eliminating worry. One of the things is first identifying what the issue is. First identifying what the issue is. What is this thing that you're worrying about? What is this? And once you identify what it is, you re you go you you're identifying it the let me say I want to say this. Your approach of how to identify it is not just to look at the situation to see what it is, but you're identifying it. It's also looking at this knowing that this will be resolved. There will be an answer. There will be a remedy. This will get, this will get dealt with. This will be handled. And so when I say identify it, you have to go in knowing that this is going to be handled, that you have everything within you to bring into fruition what you need to make this issue, to make this situation so that you don't have to worry. You know, um, a lot of times worrying can really cause some physical damage. It can really cause high blood pressure. I've seen people, blood pressure go up. I've seen people get sick where they got to go to the hospital. I see people have headaches. I mean, worrying could – just think how much effort and energy, concentration and focus that we're putting into this one thing to the point where it almost can kill us. Now, imagine if we took that much concentration and focus and focused on the answer, 
focused on the remedy, focused on the, 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 the resolution, the solution to the issue, to the problem. And so I, I, I think that it, it, we have to first identify knowing that there will be a situation on how we can identify this situation. Is this something that needs to be handled right away? Is this something that will take time? Is this something that may be a lesson for me? Is this something, because a lot of times we, when you worry about things and you blow it up to 10 times and 100 times bigger than what it is, we, in our minds, we say, oh, this thing is going to destroy me. This thing is going, I, I'll never be able to come back from this when it's something so simple, so minute, right? Being able to consciously understand who you are and what, te- and, and now, now those of you that are on the call on Sunday morning, you will have gotten a whole bunch of tools, a whole bunch of techniques and different things that you guys can use to definitely instill your will of concentration and focus on the solution. Now, I'll go ahead and say this. One of the secrets of the formula to the formula of eliminating worry is to live the answer. To live the answer. That means instead of focusing on the the problem, the issue, instead of focusing on it, just live the answer. You are the solution to your problem. One of the first uh, talks we did was the I am. Whatever I add I am to, I become it. I bring it into fruition, right? You are the solution, which means that for every issue, so, so we understand that there's no accidents, right? There's no mistakes in life, right? Whatever issue that's presented to me, right, it has to, it, 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 there, I have to come to the realization of my consciousness that the solution is within me. I, I was watching a, um, a program the other day, and we're going to get into this when we move into the Millionaire of Nazareth, um, Millionaire of the Bible series. But the girl said that she was in a, a depressed state because she had a lack of money, and she was worrying about how she was going to take care of her bills and how she was going to pay this and that. And when she said what she came to realize was that she didn't have a lack of money. She had a lack of ideas because ideas are what create money. You don't have a lack of money. You have a lack of ideas. And so what she said was she had to really move into a place where she had to now galvanize and pull her ideas together. And when she was able to pull her ideas together, she was able to get money started just coming from everywhere, right? Money chases ideas. When you are dealing with an issue, you have to learn how to live the answer. She had worried about the money, worried about her bills. Worrying wasn't going to do anything but only affect her physically. It wasn't going to make anything happen because when you worry, you only are magnifying the issue. But when she realized that, wait a minute, all I have to do is begin to live the answer, which means it is now to start executing and living the ideas and creating and allowing these ideas to come to me, these ideas will begin to now manifest and allow money to come to me. And we know that in order to get more money, you got to have money. Why? Because money begets money. Money is a magnet. So money will magnetize more money to itself. And so I, I begin to look at that and say, we we have to get to a place where we cannot allow ourselves to worry about things that we don't have, things that are not or that we we think are not or, or make things impossible. There's nothing that's impossible to the mind. The the mind is the most powerful weapon that we have, right? We talk about this on Wednesday night call, how we are masters of our mind, mind over matter. And you have to look at the issue and the situation that you're dealing with. Because sometimes the issues and the situations that you're dealing with are really designed to stretch you and enhance you. They're not roadblocks. They're not set up to paralyze you. They're not set up to destroy you. 
That's why you have to realize the power of your consciousness, the power of the conscious mind. We talked about this earlier, how worrying brings a negative connotation to you and you have a negative vibration. It not only affects your vibration, but your attitude is negative, right? Your attitude is everything. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to now begin to change your attitude. Don't allow that negativity to come into you. Don't allow yourself to have those negative thoughts. That's where the willpower comes in. That's where the power to concentrate and focus on living the answer. That's where that comes into place where you don't allow the negativity. And listen, I would, I would, I would do this. You have to find a way of how you deal with things when they come to your concern. Now, everybody's human. We're all going to be concerned about certain things. Everything is not going to go right. Everything is not going to go according to plan. But when we have a concern, we do not need to take that concern and blow it up by 100 and not start worrying about it. But when we get the concern, I would write it down. I would write down what the concern is. And whatever the concern is, I would write it down. And then I also, right after I write it down, I will put down what I believe the solution is. Or or if you don't know what the solution is or don't have a clue, I would put source, divine mind, will provide the solution. I would write that down. I would say divine source has provided the solution. And, and, and so what I mean by that is I would put has already provided the solution because now I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in and meditate, I'm going to go and be still. I'm not going to focus on the issue. I'm going to focus on the remedy. I'm going to focus on all that worrying power that I was going to put into worrying to make it 100 times worse and raise up my pressure and get my headache and all this kind of stuff. I'm going to use that energy and focus on living the answer. So now that I'm already operating that this, the issue that I had was already resolved, that the issue, there is an answer, there is a remedy for it. And once I live the answer, the universe now comes and says, guess what? We're going to go ahead and make that efficient because th these are some of the things that you have done. You have to not allow yourself to be around people, places, situations, that are not good for you mentally, emotionally. Because another thing, too, is when you start worrying, what makes worrying so uh, devastating is the emotional level that attaches to it. Because when you, when you start worrying, you get emotional. You know, you, I, I've seen people start crying. I've seen people, you know, all kind of stuff. You get really emotional because you have really put this facade in your mind that this issue is so much bigger, that the devastation, that the... Uh, th that this thing is so that the, you have this made this conclusion in your mind that this thing is so big and so devastating and so horrible that you now got emotionally attached to it, and it's the emotional uh, your, your emotional connection to it that gives it that power because your emotional connection, your feeling nature is what magnetizes to you. But when you worry about things, you only what you do is you only magnetize to you. The very thing, the same issue. I I, I got to say that we are not going to worry anymore. We're not going to allow things that come to our concern, that come to our attention. We're not going to allow ourselves to worry, but when they come to our attention, we're going to learn how to deal with them, how to find a solution, how to find the remedy, how to live the answer. Write that down. Live the answer, whatever the answer is. Just live the answer. Living the answer means that I'm walking in consciousness. I'm living in consciousness. I'm moving in consciousness. I'm speaking in consciousness because I understand that consciousness is everything. So I'm constantly living the answer. Whatever that answer is, whatever the answer needs to be. Now, listen, you want to always live the answer, right? But when you live the answer, you are all you when you when you say that I'm living the answer, you are connected to divine to the divine within, the God in you, and you're connected knowing that the situation has been resolved. Now, once you walk with the conscious mind of living the answer, that's it. Stay out of your own way. Don't worry about how the issue is gonna get resolved. Don't worry about who's gonna do it. Don't worry about where the money's gonna come from. Don't worry about if they're gonna accept it if the deal is gonna go through. 
all these things that you're worrying about, don't worry how the issue is going to get resolved. Just operate and walk in living the answer. Because when you when you allow yourself to to start getting into how things are going to happen and when is it going to happen, and you allow yourself to worry. You allow yourself to worry. You, the, the scripture says in our text here, it says, it says, uh, and who of you by worrying can add one length, uh, can add one hour to the length of your life? And why are you worrying about clothes? See how the lilies and the wildflowers of the field grow. They do not labor. They do not spend wool, wool making clothing. Yet I say not even Solomon in his glory and splendor dressed like one of these. So if God clothes the grass of the field, how come he can't, how come the universe can't provide for you? The universe will always take care of you. But the universe will only take care of you of, uh, according to how you take care of yourself. Because man will always receive what he first gives himself. And if, you could, if you're giving yourself worry, then that's what you're getting. You know, when you don't allow yourself to worry, you have to really realize how much damage you can do to yourself health-wise, worrying about your children, worrying about your husband, your wife, your spouse, your mother, your father, just worrying all the time. And, and how detrimental that can be to your health. I think that this is a serious issue, and this is why I wanted to talk about it tonight, because I, I've been talking to some people, and, and just to see what worrying has done, dealing with just worrying about issues, and these are things that we can speak into existence. These are things that we can manifest into existence. We can manifest the answers, the remedies, the solutions. Live the answer. Tonight, whatever you're worrying about, whatever you're concerned about, whatever issue you're dealing with at this moment, don't worry about it. Just live the answer. Sometimes you got to know how to, sometimes you got to learn how to just speak things into existence. Sometimes you got to learn how to just, because you got to know how powerful your word is. The Bible says that the word will go forth and do what you call it to do. It will not return unto you void. Bible also says, that death and life are in the palm of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. So you got to understand how powerful your word is. I used to tell people all the time, those people that need money, all they got to do is just start calling money, and money will show up. Have you ever, now, now, check, now check out how powerful this is. Anybody on this call tonight, if you can agree, how many of you have ever thought about somebody in their mind, and five minutes after you started thinking about them, they just called you? You say, you know what? You're going to live a long time. I was just thinking about you. Look how powerful that is. You, you start, you, you was in a conversation talking about somebody. Five minutes later, you're walking down the street, you turn the corner, you run right into the person you were just talking about. You say, you know what, man? You're going to live a long time, man. I was just talking about you the other day. Right? No coincidence. There's no mistakes. There's no accident. Right? Now, how, if, how can we do that? but we can't speak into existence the word, the solution, the remedy of whatever issue we got, and it not come to pass. And, you know, I was also, I'm going to get off, off track a little bit because I want to talk about this. Spirit is moving me this way. One of the things that I want to deal with on August the 8th when we do the Prosperity Now call, I think I'm going to have to buy a lot of candles because what I want to do what Spirit is telling me to do is also not just give you guys money candles, but also give you guys the healing candle. Because the Bible says that I want you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. What sense do it make for you to prosper and you're, and you're not healthy? So I think we're going, we're going to get in on that on, on August the 8th. I want to really work with that and uh, do the healing candle and also the money candle. You got to be able to live the answer. You can't allow yourself to worry about things that can be handled. They can be brought into fruition. They can be, you can speak the solution. You can think the solution. That just goes to show you how powerful your mind is. Now, another thing how powerful your mind is, 
is anybody on this call who's ever gotten a car, you got a brand new car. Now, the car that you got, there's hundreds of people in the world who have the same car, but you never noticed it. But now that you have this car and it's connected with your consciousness and you become one with it, you're driving off the car lot with that car. All of a sudden, all you see is the same car that you got. It just seems to jump out to you. The same car that you have, you now see it everywhere. Why? Because you were constantly connected to it, and it's now allowing your mind's eye to see this, this, this connection. Same thing. We have to get connected to the answer, the solution, the remedy, and not allow ourselves to worry about issue circumstances, but learn how to create. I tell you guys all the time, the best way to predict the future is to create it. I think that we also need to just live day by day. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Don't don't live today and worry about tomorrow. Live for today. Tomorrow has the Bible says tomorrow has its own troubles. But live for today and I think that you know Another thing too is that when you when you become structured and disciplined and how you operate, and this is this is me preaching to myself as well, you will be surprised at how really your day goes well when you're able to really orchestrate it and really discipline yourself and give yourself time for whatever you need, time for meditation, time for family, and really prioritize and put things in perspective. But you gotta you gotta put yourself in a position where you're living day to day, where you're not worrying about next week, you're not worrying about next year, you're not worrying about six months from now. And these are the things that will constantly and like we said earlier, it is slow. That worrying is slow, but it's pers- it's persistent. It can start off as a little concern, and then a week will pass, it turns into a little bigger concern, and then a week passes and it turns into a bigger concern. And then you're still constantly worrying about it. And the more you worry about it, the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets. And you just keep worrying about it till it turns into this whole big thing when it was really nothing that big at all. You are always bigger than every issue and every circumstance that you got to deal with. You got to know that. You got to be able to see yourself for who you are. You got to be able to see yourself and understand the movement and the understanding of how you operate. You got to be able to move and operate in that. You got to be. You can't allow yourself to allow the worry to be bigger than you, what you're worrying about. But live the answer. Live the answer is a state of consciousness. It's a mindset. So in every situation, I'm living the answer. I'm no longer wanting, needing, but I'm speaking that it's already done. I'm operating that the issue has already been resolved. And check this out. Even if I don't know how the issue will be resolved, I'm already connecting with the God in me that it is resolved. And because I'm already operating that it is resolved, it will have to be resolved because I have already accepted and moved into living the answer in consciousness. So it has to be resolved. The same energy that I'm putting into worrying, I'm not going to transform that energy into putting it into my concentration and my focus. And so now I'm operating that, you know what, the bill, I'm already walking around as the bill is already paid. I'm already walking around as my, my, uh, my situation has been resolved, that the deal went through. I'm already, because what I'm doing now, by me walking around living the answer, what I'm telling the universe is, it's already done. And guess what? What I'm doing inwardly, I'm creating the cause. And because I'm creating the cause, the universe now has to go out and make it a reality now. But when you worry, you're telling the universe that, oh, my God, I don't have the money. Oh, my God, I'm going to lose my apartment. Oh, my God, they're going to repo my car. Oh, my God, I'm not going to, the deal is not going to go through. I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get fired. All these things you're worrying about. But that's what you're giving out, and that's the, that's the energy, that's the focus that you're focusing on, and so that's what the universe is going to make happen because that's what you're secretly harboring. 
you got to let that go. You got to learn how to release that and let it go. You got to do what we, what we talked about on the Sunday call and go through the mental circumcision where you're able to, to circumcise those thoughts that would allow you to worry. We, we also move into being able to realize that you got to live, as I said, day by day, which means by this. Now, I'm a person that I can see things, and I'm a person that likes to deal with things before they happen. So a lot of people get frustrated with me, but what I tell them is I say, listen, I'm making this move right here so that two months from now, I won't have no issues. I can see that if I don't make this move that I'm about to make right now, that this issue will happen and it will be much more easier for me to deal with things if I make the move that I'm making now. Why? Because I'm living the answer. And so you have to start moving and operating strategically and how you see situations and different things happening, right? So you, you, you have to be able to maneuver and, and understand your life pattern. It's also a matter of where you're going in life, what you're doing with your life, or you living or just existing, right? You want to be able to live. You know, I was listening to uh, one of my mentors, uh, Bishop Jordan, and uh, he said, he was talking yesterday, he says, are you on the menu or are you sitting at the table eating? He said, because if you're sitting on the table eating, that means you're looking at the menu and you're selecting off the menu what you want to eat. But if you're not sitting at the table, then that means you're on the menu. You're an item on the menu. I want to be sitting at the table eating, right? So you don't want to be in a position to where you're worrying about what's going to happen next week, next year. You cross that bridge when you get there. Don't be thinking, oh, my God, I got to get there. How am I going to do this? How am I going to make it here? Uh, we don't have the money to get there. We don't have – you're worried about what you don't have, what you don't this, what you don't that. And whatever you're focusing on, you're going to keep getting the don't, the don't, the don't. But when you change your level of thinking and your shift your consciousness to living the answer, you're not moving into the level of consciousness like I already have it, we're going to go, we're going to be there. And so you're telling yourself, listen, we're going to get the resources we need. You're not going to get them. You already have them because you have it in consciousness first. And because I said this earlier, as it is in consciousness, so shall it be on earth. So your solution, your remedy, your answer to that issue has already been resolved. Whether you have the, res the resolution or not in the physical realm, you must always have it and accept it and hold on and galvanize to it on the inside. It's an inside job first. Because the worrying and all that stuff comes from the inside too. You start worrying, you get emotionally attached. That same emotional attachment that you attach to worry, you need to attach that same emotional vibration to living the answer. being able to live the answer means that I'm living the answer that I'm already, I am the answer. The answer is within me. Listen, everything you need is within you. Everything you need. Somebody says, well, you know, uh, we talked about, well, how much money do you need? It doesn't matter how much money you need because you are money. Everybody on this call, you are money. You are your own bank. How much money you make or how much money you generate is determined by you. We read all these magazines about, uh, you know, how much this person made and how much that person made and what they did and what they did. Everybody to each is their own. It's your ability to make money or to generate money always depends on your level of consciousness. Being able to live the answer. Now, there's a, a whole lot of stuff that goes along with it. Like we've been learning uh, the millionaires of the Bible series. We've been learning. Uh, the, the techniques, the mindset, the mental acceptance. We've been learning all those things that are going to be needed, not just to be a millionaire, but how to stay at that status and go higher. So you have to learn how to eliminate the worry for your kids, right? Eliminate worry for your parents. You know, um, I don't know how many of you will watch the TV show The Shy, 
but I've been watching the show to Sai, and uh, there's a gentleman on there, um, and his mother has been diagnosed with cancer. And every time they show him embracing his mother, it does something to me because in that moment, I have to I have to realize and, and come, and, you know, you get so attached to these characters that sometimes you have to realize that you cannot I, – I find myself falling into a state of worry about this character because – I understand the significance of a mother and son relationship, but I can't allow myself to worry, but come to a place that I believe that we can find a remedy for this. I believe that there can be a healing, that she can be totally healed. I don't care what stage she's in, but not allow myself to worry and to think about, oh my God, how much time does she has left? What did the doctors tell her? Is it terminal? All these different things that I have you worrying, getting all upset, I mean, getting yourself really caught up and really, but there's a way that we can deal with this. And for some of us, it's not going to happen overnight. It may take work because we've been spend, we we've all spent our lives at some point worrying about things and and worrying about situations and um, how is this going to happen and how can I make this happen? This is what I need to get done. And so we got to stop worrying about the situation and start focusing on the answer focusing on the solution as it's already done. And don't worry how it's going to come into fruition. Just know that we're living the answer. And by us living the answer, we're going to start walking around, speaking, acting, and, and moving around like it's already done. Like there's, no, like there's no problem, like there's no issue. And people will say, well, you know, uh, did you do this and did you do that? And, you know, no. one of the things I've always learned, and I'll tell you this, Never tell anybody none of your problems unless they can help you. If they can't help you, don't tell them. So when people ask me, hey, um, how's everything going? Everything is wonderful and great. Hey, how's everything is wonderful, magnificent, and great? Why? Never tell anybody your problems who can't help you. If they can't help you, what you telling them for? They can't do nothing to you to help you. I've always said this, too. I never let nobody tell me no that can't tell me yes. And so what that means is if I'm dealing with somebody and he tells me no, but he doesn't have the power to tell me yes, then I don't, I, he doesn't have the power to tell me no. Because you cannot tell me no if you don't have the power to tell me yes. If you have to go and ask somebody else or go get somebody else to say yes, then you don't have the power. You don't have the power to tell me no. Never let nobody tell you no that does not have the power to tell you yes. And another thing, as I said earlier, never tell anybody your problem if they can't help you, if they can't help you, don't tell them. They say, hey, how you doing? How's everything? Everything is magnificent and wonderful. I'm doing wonderful, magnificent, and great. Uh, I heard this. I, I know what you heard, but I'm doing magnificent, wonderful, and great because I never tell anybody my problems who, who does not have the ability to help me. If you can't help me in my situation, then what am I going to tell you my problems for? I'm already walking around living the answer. I'm not trying to create gossip. I don't need to be around people that's going to talk about what's going on, that's not going to do nothing. And I think the worst thing in the world is, and, and this is what I really, this is what you really have to be able to get over. We talked about this, how to overcome people's um, opinions. Because this, the worst thing in the world is for you, somebody to help you, and then they have to tell everybody they helped you. I think that's the worst thing in the world because you didn't really help me. You wanted to help me, and now you want to go show everybody that you helped me. You wasn't helping me for the right reason. If you're going to help somebody, help them. You don't need to broadcast that you're helping them, right? You, you by us, op and, and, and one of the things that will happen, too, if you start operating and moving in your state of consciousness of living the answer, you may get a friend, a family, a loved one that may call you out the blue and say, hey, look, you know what, is everything all right? You was on my mind, you know, and I don't know what happened. And you will feel the spiritual connection, and you may say, hey, look, I'm dealing with this situation or whatever. Oh, you know what, don't worry about that. I, I, I got that handled right now. You don't know how the situation is going to get handled. You don't know how it's going to happen. But you got to always live the answer, constantly move and operate in the answer, in the consciousness that I'm living the answer. I got to move day by day, deal with today today, I deal with tomorrow tomorrow, 
whatever I seek now, if there's something that I can deal with today that will definitely make things better later on down the line for sure. But at the same time, I also going to realize that I'll cross that bridge when I get there. You know how you be around people and they say, well, I know you're going to do this, but, you know, when you get there, you're going to have to go through all of this stuff and you got to go through this. And you got, well, you know, that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Because what they don't know is that I'm operating on something totally different than what they're operating on. They're operating from the outside in. I'm operating from the inside out. And because I'm operating from the inside out, by the time I get to the bridge, you don't know what kind of situation I'm going to go ahead and create and manifest. As in consciousness, so it is on earth. I'm constantly creating and manifesting my life. So I definitely want to um, definitely allow us to move and operate day by day. You don't have to just just live for today. Just operate for today. Put the plan together. You know what your plan is. You know where you're going. You have a, a system of operation. And I will say this. You got to take action. Action. That's the word for August action. I was in meditation and spirit gave me the word. I said, what's the next move? What's the next, um, what, what's our next move? Our next move got to be our best move. And I asked spirit, what's our next move? And the spirit said, action. We did a lot of studying. We learned a lot of techniques. We learned a lot of philosophies, a lot of uh, golden nuggets. We learned a lot. Spirit said, the month of August is about action. Take action. Don't read about it. Don't talk about it. Don't meditate about it. Take action. And the same thing when it comes to you, when you're dealing with living the answer, don't worry about it. Don't get caught up in the, the, the magnifying the problem and making it, you know, but learn how to take action. Taking action is writing it down, writing down the issue writing down what the result you would like to be, or if you don't know what the result is, you already say the God in me has already given me the solution. It's already solved. And you meditate and, and operate on living the answer. And by living the answer, you will see things coming unfold. Why? Because you already are operating in consciousness. Instead of your emotional connection being about worry, your commotion, you have an ease and a calm emotional connection that says it's already done. Your feeling is your magnetizing power. So when you have that, how would it feel if the issue was resolved? How would it feel if, if the money that you needed was given to you? You would have this calm, cool, collective peace, like, oh, God, I thank you. I, I, I got the money I need. I can pay my bills. I can do what I need. That same cool, collective feeling that you have, you need to already manifest that within and know that you already got it, and it has to show up. But you can't worry about how it's going to show up. You don't want to block it. Somebody on here may need some, somebody on here may need, say, I want to do some investments. I want to, I want to get some funds to do some investments um, because I want to expand my, my, my territory. I want, to, I want to put my, I want my money to work for me. I don't want to work for money no more. And so, you are already see you already see the investments being made, even though they're not physically made. In consciousness, you made those investments. You know the money that you need, and so it comes together. You'll be surprised at how things will begin to unfold once you actually connect with them in consciousness and connect and start to live the answer. Why? Because you are the answer. You are the solution. You are the solution to every problem. You. Everybody on this call, you are the solution to your problem. And when we understand that we are the solution to our own problems, we won't go outside looking outside of ourselves for the answer. We won't allow, because we just talked about this on Sunday. One, another reason why a lot of people worry is because they let them five kings defeat them. 
And if you don't know what the five kings are, the five kings represent the five senses, right? You worry a lot because of what you see, because of what you hear, of what you taste, smell, feel, right? Those are the things, the five senses. And what you see, taste, touch, feel is not always correct. Can always can sometimes be considered an illusion. So if you know how to master and defeat those five kings, you can eliminate the worry. You can live the answer. And and don't allow that worry to to come in to your life. I think that, you know, one of the things that I that I love is that um, we have the ability to create your own reality. You know, when I when I first started the Enlightenment Center back in I think two thousand and eight, I had a radio show on Block Talk Radio and it was entitled Creating Your Own Reality. Why? Because I I I believe that we create our own reality. Good, bad, and different. We create it. And because we create our own reality, it's this world is amazing. Um and I you know, I really can't wait to get you guys on this uh prophetic call because I have so many things I want to share with you about where we are, what we need to be and equip you guys on things that we need to start getting ready for. And um, we 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 have to be able to create our own reality. We have to be able to move into a place where we begin to definitely understand and 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 operate in some wonderful um, some wonderful experiences that will come into our lives. And there is no such thing as luck. There's no such thing as chance. The good that you desire, the good that you want, that lifestyle that you, that you want to live, you, you can live it. It's a choice. But the choice has to be done on the inside, not the outside. And that's why it's difficult for some of us is because we're trying to do things on the outside in instead of the inside out. It's an inside job. And so I, I, I just want to definitely commend you guys for being a part of this call. Um, I think that we are in a good place where we are. We're moving into the month of action, taking action. This is a time to take action. This is a time for you to start putting into perspective the things that you want to do. Um I got to ask you the question, what's next? Your next move needs to be your best move. And we will know what our next move is coming into August. We're going to be moving into the month of action. I am now open and receptive to the rich, divine ideas that now perfectly, infinitely sustain my business affairs. Nothing can defeat me. I give thanks for the perfect, immediate, right results. I rejoice that I am now successful in all my ways. I do not depend upon persons or conditions for my prosperity. God in me is my source of my supply. So I now put God in me first financially. Faithful tithing of my whole income now operates the law of ever-increasing prosperity for me. Yes, I pronounce the business and everything that I do shall succeed and prosper now. I give thanks for the divine restoration in my business affairs. Divine restoration is now doing its perfect work for all involved, and the perfect results appear now. I give thanks that every financial obligation is now being met, and God in me own wisdom and wonderful way. There is no condemnation or resentment in me for me and around about me. Divine love and harmony now reign supreme in me, 
in my world here and now. As we get ready to embark on this new month that we're going to enter in, I just want to just thank everybody for being on this call. Um, I want you to definitely, whatever issues you're, you're dealing with, um, begin to write them down, begin to write the solutions, begin to operate and move and live the answer. Begin to focus on the, the, the solutions, the remedy, the, you know, the, 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 the issue as being resolved already. Focus on that, not allowing yourself to blow it out of proportion with worry and, and put yourself in, in health danger and, and put your body in danger and all the different things that can happen from worrying. So we want to always be able to eliminate the worry, not allow us to worry about this thing, but get get a he- get a hang of it, put get 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 ahead of this thing, and be able to deal with it. Why? Because this is how masters handle things. Masters don't worry; they deal with things head on. Masters don't run; they walk. And I had to learn that because you know a lot of times in life when you get scared and you start worrying about things and you start thinking that things are bigger and that there's no way that you can do this or you can do that, a lot of times people run. But we have to learn how to walk away from things. We don't run away. After we've mastered them, we we walk. We have become masters over our minds. And because we have become masters over our minds, that allows us to defeat those five kings, which are the five senses. And if you don't defeat those five kings, you will see worry come through like never before because that's one of the biggest ways that worry comes is through the five senses, by what you see, by what you heard, by what they said. It's always about, did you see this? Did you see this? You watch the news. You you listen to this. You listen to that. So we, we can't allow ourselves to worry and can't allow ourselves to, we got to stay connected to the God within us and, um, Continue to meditate, continue to write, continue to put our road life maps together, continue to work on our five-year plan, which will continue to help us with the three years, which will help us within a year, which will help us within six months, which will help us within 30 days. So we got to we, 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 we gotta put it together. We got to do the action. We're moving into the month of action. This is showtime now. Action. Faith without works is dead, being yet alone. So this is our time to move in and do that. So I'm excited about that. Just want to keep you guys reminded, don't forget, we're going to have our Sin Prosperity Now Prophetic Encounter on August the 8th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Sunday night. Um, Also, that Sunday morning at 9 a.m., We'll, we will be um, doing the first chapter of the uh, Millionaire of the Bible Series, Nazareth. That's going to be the yellow book with the gold star. So um, if you want to go ahead and order that from Amazon, I believe you can probably get a PDF of it or you can probably get a physical copy. I myself like the physical copy. I like to highlight, write notes, all those kind of things. I'm still old-fashioned in that way. So I like the, I like the physical book. Um, so we can definitely do that. So I want to just remind you guys, as we move into our circulation, uh, every Wednesday we work with the uh, Mastermind Seed, which is the $11.11. Um, and that seed is going to be, um, the 11 is a master number, right? The number that represents duality. It represents the number of intuition. It represents the number of the master number, being able to master over the mind, right? To to master your mind, right? But it also deals with the merging, the duality of the subconscious mind and the conscious mind, right? Being able to master your mind. And in order to master your life, to master your fears, to create your own reality, you have to be able to master your mind. And we work with that seed. So on tonight, those of you that want to sow the $11.11, uh, you can do so by Cash App, which is going to be dollar sign T O E S C. That's Triple of Enlightenment Spiritual Center. And then also you can uh, send it 
you can send it to Zell, which is going to be um, Issachar Bay, I-S-S-A-C-H-A-R-B-E-Y at gmail.com. And then we have Venmo, which is going to be the at sign, Issachar, I-S-S-A-C-H-A-R dash A. And then we have PayPal, which is also going to be uh, Issachar Bay at gmail.com. So those are the four ways that you can uh, sow the mastermind seed tonight, $11.11. Um, those, those, those $11.11 mastermind seeds, right, those numbers represent the structure, the organization. It represents the prioritizing, the putting things in perspective, right, how to become a master over my mind, over a matter, right, how to be able to allow my mind to control everything and understand that I am my mind, and my mind is me. There is no separation. So we continue to operate in our circulation. What you re re release, what you will release by circulation will come back to you 100-fold return. Um, I'm excited about August. I, you know, um, and the way that universe is, and spirit is moving me, you know, I, I've always believed that, like I said, July was elevation and expansion, right? But, man, I, I can't wait to hear the testimonies of prosperity and money coming to people's hands in August. And uh, when we get on this call, we're going we, we gonna to call a lot of things out into the open. And uh, we're going we, we, we gonna to open up the heavens. And so I'm excited about that. Um, and this new moon is very inter interesting. It's very um, it's going to be very interesting. I'm really looking forward to really connecting and really doing some things um, with all of you on this call. And I believe we need to get as many people on that call as possible. We're going to be discussing a lot of things coming up, and I, I, everybody needs to hear this call. So I, I want, even if they're not going to participate and so the uh, getting to the prosperity, uh, send prosperity now, candles or anything like that, it's okay. But they still need to be on the call to be in the atmosphere. He that has an ear, let him hear. So we want to get as many people as we can on that call. So I want to thank you guys. Remember, meet me Sunday morning, uh, same place, same number. We're going to be Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We're going to be uh, doing the last chapter of the Millionaires of the Bible City, Joshua. This was a great book, great, great. Uh, and uh, those of you who are uh, getting the chance to listen, you can go to our YouTube page which is the Temple of Enlightenment on YouTube, and you can listen to all of the uh, calls, the Men of the Bible series, all of our Lesson and Wisdom calls. So, um, yeah, we, we are definitely excited about that. You can definitely uh, go and do that. Um, so I want to thank you guys for joining this call. And before we leave, I'd just like to say this one thing. Your destiny is not a matter of chance, but it's a matter of choice. Thank you and good night.